Hi everyone, my name is Matt Haynes. I'm an audiobook narrator and I love to share my adventures in the craft with all of you. Um, what uh, we're going to do here is uh, take a listen to a sample of a book that I've done. And uh, the reason why I would categorize this as an adventure is I actually didn't even realize until after I was uh, finished with several books in this series called the Playroom Series by J.P. Sale. Um, that I had been educated in a whole other world that uh, some people didn't even know about. Um, the world of what I have been calling wholesome kink. A lot of people uh, laughed when they, when they heard me say that, but the stories that I've been reading from J.P. Sale are so heartfelt that uh, I am so based around the idea of recovery and healing and connection uh, all within the kink world. One of the things that's uh, so important in the world of kink is the idea of consent and the idea of uh, caring and of pleasure. And uh, in this series uh, called uh, Farron's Journey, uh, a young man named Farron who is into kink has an abusive experience and in the next uh, th series of books, three books, uh, is recovering from it and gaining his uh, ground thanks to um, a uh, lover named Isaac. Well, I don't want to be too spoiler, but yeah, Isaac ends up becoming a, a lover and a partner. So, uh, enjoy a segment of Farron's Journey, book two. You'll need to bear with me while I try to explain some stuff. He took another drink of his tea. You know I can still remember how you looked the first time I saw you. You had on a black shirt and fitted jeans. Your hair was a little longer than it is now, but it was your eyes that captured my attention. They held a wealth of sadness, but underneath it there was a spirited soul that, that called to me. Given the soft way he was speaking, it took a second to register what he'd said. I froze with the mug halfway to my lips, my mouth hanging open. What did he mean that I'd called to him? But before I could gather my wits about me enough to question it, he'd already carried on as if he was oblivious to the fact that he was rocking my world. I haven't talked about the way I spectacularly outed myself about what I was into on the day you first moved in. I've never hidden who I am, little man, not from anyone. But the daddy side of my nature kind of never came up because I've never found a boy I wanted enough to call my own. Not until you. He exhaled so noisily as he finished talking, that I had to go over it in my head twice before I could figure out the meaning behind his words. Until me. Had he really meant that? At least it answered the question of whether he'd ever had a boy before. If I believed him anyway, why wouldn't you? When has Isaac ever lied to you? Never. In all the time I'd spent with him, at home and at work, and hell, even before that, he'd never shown himself to be anything less than truthful. These revelations didn't leave me anywhere to hide, though. Had I always known he felt this way? I wanted to shake it off as absurd, but memories of how I'd always felt around him started to surface, memories that I couldn't disregard that easily. Had my heart known all along, and I'd ignored it, had those inner tremblings been my heart's way of showing me what I wanted? Had I used my stupid infatuation with Carl to shield my heart? 